I was talking to a financial guy, Tom Howe, earlier in the week about inflation. And uh, one of our listeners reached out and said, I don't agree with things that Tom Howe is saying. You should be talking to Richard Wolf, who is an economics professor. Uh, that's who you should be talking to about this. So, of course, I looked up Richard Wolf and reached out to him. And he is now going to join us today. Richard Wolf is a professor of economics emeritus, uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst. He has a whole list of credentials and books he's written that are probably uh, about five minutes long. I will share bits and pieces of them with you when I uh, toss to break. Uh, but <clears throat> the long and the short of it is I am happy to welcome Professor Richard Wolf to our radio show. Hello, Professor Wolf. How are you today? I'm pretty well, and thank you for such a glowing, nice introduction. I'm much obliged. Well, um, at least one of our listeners thinks that um, when he has heard you on the radio before, you have made an awful lot of sense. So let me ask you some of the same questions that apparently teed this guy off last week. Um, I want to talk to you about inflation. You know, everybody, you know, the, this is is kind of a, a boogeyman, you know. Oh, you know, we're spending money. We're trying to open up the economy. Oh, but we might have inflation. And then if we have inflation, you know, prices will go up and interest rates are, are going to go up. What do you think of Joe Biden's economic policies? Do we have to be worried? And if not now, will we have to be worried in the future? Well, those are really good questions. Let me <laughs> be you. honest with you about which, about which ones you can answer. Nobody can predict the future except that special person in the amusement park that you give a couple of bucks to and <laughs> will tell you what's going to happen to you next week. And you know if you're, if you're halfway uh, aware of the world that that's an amusement. If you actually agonize over what that person tells you, you've misunderstood something. So nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. Not the government, not me, not you. Uh, nobody knows whether an inflation is going to be happening, is going to get worse or better. Here's what we do know. We do know that over the last year, which is basically the year of the COVID-19 plus the economic crash that we've been living through, and let me make clear to people, we should feel for ourselves as a society. The United States has had economic crashes before. We've had uh, public health disasters. We have never had the two together. This is a uh. really extraordinary period of time. We're not out of the woods yet, but a little compassion for one another under these conditions is certainly uh, merited. Anyway, over the last year, from May of 2020, to May of this year, prices on average rose 5%. Now, let me tell you why that's an inflation we need to worry about. Number one, average wages in the United States did not go up anywhere near that. So here's what that means. Whatever the average wage is, or whatever you get around the average wage, you are able to afford less with your wage this year, this May, than you were last year, because the prices have gone up more than your wages. Let me give you another example. If you earn the, the minimum wage in the United States, which is now $7.25 an hour, this has been a year when that, which you can't live on anyway, can afford you even less, 5% less, than what it afforded you a year ago. And finally, if you're living on Social Security, you are also falling behind in terms of what's happening uh, with the inflation. So you already have an inflation. It could get worse. The prediction that it won't is not to be taken seriously because the people, nobody knows, no one knows what it can be. Uh, but the reality is we are already in an economic situation that has already hurt people dramatically. And I'm very disappointed that the Biden administration, uh, which talks a good game, has not yet dealt 
with what the reality of inflation has already meant to, to American people, to the ordinary people who depend on their wages or their salaries uh, to finance their lives. Well, what, what should Joe Biden have done? Well, I'm afraid the, the medicine here has to be kind of strong, and there's no, there's no dancing around it. Let's start with a simple economic reality. Prices are set by employers, not by employees. What are you charge for a box of cereal or a quart of milk? What you're getting paid for your work? All of those are prices that are set by employers. So the interesting question is, why would employers be raising prices uh, these days? like the 30% for used cars you were talking about, or any of the other examples that I could give? Well, the answer is that employers have goals. They raise prices to reach their goals. The goal every businessman or woman will tell you is to make their business profitable. If they're earning some profits, they'd like to do better. If they're not earning profits, they'd like to begin to earn them. That's what they're in business for. And mm-hmm. one, of the ways, one of the ways you do that is you raise prices. Now, I know, having been in, in the business world myself, I know that if you're an employer who raises prices, you're going to get pushback. You're going to get people that are upset that you're charging more today than you did last month or last year. So employers have had to come up with, I'll be nice now, creative statements to justify their price increases. So this one says, there's a labor shortage and I'm having to pay my workers more. Or that one says, I have to pay more for my electric bill. Or the next one, you know, they come up with reasons to make it seem as though they, who are responsible for the prices, are only doing it, raising them, because something else is forcing them. Is that true sometimes? Sure it is. But it's also a very convenient way from distracting people from the reality that if there's a price increase generally going around, and that's what inflation means, it's because employers are figuring that this is a time when they could possibly raise prices and make better uh, results for their business than they otherwise could. So what should President Biden do? Well, let's go back to a conservative president, Richard Nixon, way back in 1971. Faced with an inflation then, here's what he did. He declared a wage price freeze. He said, we've got to get it under control. It's threatening our society. The vast majority of people are being hurt. So I am going to declare that as of Monday morning or whatever day he picked, uh, nobody can raise a price. And that's simply the way it is. And if you do, we're going to arrest you because you're damaging the society in which we live. Then that was an extreme action. But that's why I mentioned that we need to have compassion for ourselves because we're a society going through a very extreme time. And therefore, Mm -hmm. we ought to be taking steps that could really make a difference.